So, hello everybody, thank you for coming this evening to this talk about connection string attacks. Uh, first of all, thank you. I know it's Saturday, it's late, everybody wants to be in another place having beers and so on. And for us it's, it's very good to have you here, so thank you very much. First of all, let me introduce ourselves. He is uh, Jose Palazón, he Hi. Palaco. He's working on Yahoo as a uh, software architect. And I'm Chema Alonso. Uh, I'm a, a Microsoft MVP in enterprise security, but I'm not working on Microsoft. I'm working in a, in a security company in Spain called i64. The talk for today is about connection string injection attacks, but before that, I would like to make a quick introduction about our country, about Spain, because maybe you don't know it, but you love Spain. Viva España. <laughs> well, this year we won the World Cup, so we are very proud of this. I'm sorry for the Argentine people and the rest of the world. <laughs> and I'm sorry for the, for the people from Germany and, and Holland. Well, also we got very good uh, sports. Pau Gasol. Very well. Rafa Nadal and Alberto Contador. We are very proud of that, guys. It's, and we got sexy people like <laughs> Antonio Banderas, oh my god, Antonio Banderas. Penelope Cruz, oh no, and of course Chema Alonso and Jose Palaco, oh, that's yeah. very nice guys. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> well, some, uh, maybe uh, everybody knows where is Spain, but that's this Europe and Spain is not that country, it's not that country. <laughs> Spain is that small country in the south of Europe. You know, we got a long, long beaches around the whole country. So it's a very nice place to be. Please come to Spain. We will love you. And of course in Spain we got party f parties for everybody. We got the most famous party. <laughs> this is San Fermín. It's the, the greatest part party ever. It's very nice and it's very simple. You only have to run. Uh, it's quite simple. <laughs> And of course, we got food and flamenco. Everybody knows flamenco, of course, and that's very nice. Uh, we got uh, very good people like Dali, painters like Dali or Picasso. Maybe you know it. Who knows? Picasso and Dali. Yes. Uh, Picasso. Despite all the good things that Spain has done for the world, we have though to apologize on behalf of the government and pretty much 80% of the population for the Macarena. So, oh, about Macarena. <laughs> well, sorry about I that. I like it. I like the Macarena. How many of you have been dancing Macarena sometime in your life? Please confess it. Ana <laughs> Macarena. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Let's get into business. <laughs> okay, so. What we're actually going to talk today is connection string attacks. So to define what this is, so basically a connection string is how do you define how your application, like a web application or any other kind of application, is going to connect to a data source. Being a data source, either a database, <coughs> LDAP, uh, some kind of file system base, XML, kind of whichever you want to use. Um, and in particular, what we're going to focus our, our work here is database connection strings. If you look at that slide, what you have here is the very minimal, uh, minimal database connection string that you, could put, that you can put together. It's in four lines for the sake of clarity, but you could consider that as like a single string, where what you have is the data source, that is the server where, you, where your data source is going to be, your database in this case. You have the schema. Like you, of course, you, have, you might have many da uh, databases in your server, so you're going to choose which one you want to use. And then you have the credentials, username and password. Um, as I said, it is like a string. And this is an example of a piece of code where you can see how these uh, strings are constructed. Usually, when an application connects to a database, um, there's two ways of doing that. It's either a static string or it's a dynamic string. If this is a static string, a string then you just put everything together, like data source, something, semicolon, uh, the schema, something, semicolon, username, and password. If, there's, if this is dynamic, if for so, some reason, and we will see the cases afterwards, you want uh, to use dynamic parameters here, you have to create this string somehow. Unfortunately, most of the times you create this string by simple con concatenation. And I think we all know more or less where this is going, right? 
So that's an example of how you put together a string by concatenation. And you can see a kind of pretty much good suspect there to allow us to, to play with that. There's a character there that we're using to separate the field, and we might be able to abuse that. So that's all. We're finished. That's all. It's, it's <laughs> you can go. <laughs> well, some of the cases it's not needed even to inject to extract data from the connection stream. There are a lot of easy queries that you can throw to, through, through Google to discover a lot of information from connection stream. Just looking for uh, login pages with a data source parameter, and you can discover, of course, the data source, the username, and the password. The password is this. Uh, nah, it's quite simple to do this. There are a lot. In this case, this is uh, this is an example with an IBM. There are a lot of cases. Just yes, playing with Google, you can discover a lot of information from uh, connection stream. And in some other cases, the database administrator creates uh, a special file, which is only a plain text file, but with a special ex extension, which is UDL. And that file stores the information of the connection stream. So you can just use Google to discover that kind of files, just searching for the connect file type UDL password. And there are a lot of cases. In the example, there is a very complex password you will never figure out which it is. <laughs> and you can do it. Let's do it. We got time. So just Google. So X. UDL password. That's all. Oh. Oh. No. Oh. It's the other one. Thanks, Google. Yeah. <laughs> they even suggest how to do it right. Well, as you can see, there are uh, files with uh, information about, about the database, about the connection stream. Let's, let's download one of these, for instance. Let's see. One of my country. Which one? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, whatever this. One. The first one. Okay. Let's start the file. Okay. In Windows, it's it's quite simple because you only have to double click the file. And Microsoft has a special tool to connect against that databases, and you got the username, the password, and you just test the connection. It's in Spanish because in Spanish it's better. But you only have to click this button, and that's all. So it's quite simple. <laughs> okay, so back to business. Uh, Let's review very briefly how a web application connects to a database. Because uh, when it comes to authenticating with, authenticating with the database, there's a big uh, main, main separation that we want to do here. A uh, usual kind of web application that you probably have built, uh, you take control of your users. So you have to take care in, inside the database to create the columns and tables for the whole authentication and authorization scheme. So that's how you manage the, the, the users in your application. Uh, there's other, uh, for, well, I, I'll explain that in a bit detail later. There's the other main way of authenticating is when you don't want one single user authenticating to the database. And then you use uh, you, you have your users inside the database. You actually want your users to be the database users. Okay, so the in this slide we have the two in the, the two parts are how the strings are constructed here, and the main difference is if you're going to use the integrated security, which is no when you want to handle your authentic authentication, or yes when you want to use the system authentication. Okay, um, usually when you have the first one. Uh, most cases, you have one single user that the application, the entire application, uses to connect to the database, and then you do whatever. That is not very right because if something goes wrong, then whichever user, no matter how your permission scheme is in your application, if something is wrong, like you have a SQL injection uh, problem, then you can exploit that with the with whichever permissions that user has in the database. And usually, you, well, not usually, always, if you're using just one one user, that user needs permission all over the database 
for writing, reading, and modifying and that. So if you have the chance and you have to write one of these applications, ideally what you want to do is have as many roles as possible, not one role per user, but one role per kind of action or functionality. So you want one role to write, and if possible, one role to write here, one role to write in this other place, and then one other role to read. That way, if you have a SQL injection problem in a script that reads something from the database, then you're not going to be able to write or modify the database, right? Uh, so, you know, so you can go back to the other? Okay. Um, the, the way this works uh, is, the, like, the way this application works, no matter if you, ha if you use one single user or you or use several users, mm -hmm. is that this is the user that the application is using to authenticate against the database, which is different than my user, when my username as a user of the application, when I, can, when I authenticate against the application. So in this case, first the application is going to use those kind of static credentials to authenticate against the database, and then the application is going to ask me, the user, for my credentials. And then using the database uh, connection that has already been established with that uh, static uh, credentials, then it's going to look in this uh, scheme that I've defined to see if I have permissions to do whatever I've done as a programmer in the application. Um, on the, when the application is authenticated uh, using database users, uh, the, it, it goes the other, right, the other way around. First, the application is going to ask me for my credentials, and it's going to use these credentials to establish the connection with the database. All right? And then all that I can do in the database is whichever my user has permissions to do on the database. That's good in those environment in, you, in which you have the, in, uh, an internal application with single sign-on uh, credentials or you are working with internal user and you want to know uh, what is doing every user in your database and so on. So in the previous case, it's impossible to trace from the database uh, who did anything because the trace had, uh, had, uh, had to be done in the web application. So it's different. In one case, is, uh, one, one environment is good for one kind of application, and the other one is good for another kind of application. And of course, that environment is, uh, is mandatory if you want to manage the database. If you want to manage the database to create tables, to create new databases, to expand uh, table space or, or whatever, you need to manage the database, so you need a special connection against the database. This means that pretty much every possible control panel that you can find out there is going to use something similar to this to, to work, because the user that you're, that you're using when you're authenticated on the application, it is actually a database user. <coughs> um, so as we said before, this is put together in a string. And then you're going to do a string concatenation to put all these values together. So uh, the way this works is you get one string, this purse, this value purse with the value equal, like uh, parameter equal value, semicolon, parameter equal value, semicolon. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this semicolon to as a separator. And if this string is, is going to be put together as a, a standard CQL uh, string, then we we're going to be able to add new information here. So now we're going to see what can we do by adding new information. <coughs> uh, this was discovered, like, the, the fact that this was not the right way of doing it, this, is, uh, like in, this was known something around 2005. And Microsoft was aware of this in 2005. So what they did is they provided the proper way of doing this. And the, I think it's .NET, uh, ASP.NET 2.0. So since 2.0, you have this uh, SQL connection string builder, which is uh, an object that the framework provides. And that's how you should do it. You shouldn't do uh, string concatenations to create your strings. And that's secure. The problem is that nobody was aware about how to, uh, how, uh, how to exploit this vulnerability. What can we do if we got a connection string injection into a component? What can be done? In the, uh, when we were uh, starting to uh, starting this research, we were trying to discover uh, all the information uh, published about this, and in OWASP, last September, it was impossible to discover any, any single reference about connection string attacks or connection string injection and whatever. Nobody was aware about how can we exploit this. So the problem is, is this important? Can be done something important with the semicolon? Is this dangerous? 
So we did it. So you know that this is not how you should put together a string connection, but you didn't.